Ladies and gentlemen, what's going on? And welcome to Divers Ready. My name's James. It is so great to see all of your smiling faces out there in YouTube land. And welcome to this, the fourth in our video series that we're calling Gear Maintenance, brought to you by the good people at Dive Right. This week, we're focused on back plates and harnesses. And as with every video in this series, Dive Right have been kind enough to give me a back plate and a harness to give away to one of you guys. So stay tuned to the end of the video so you can find out how to enter the contest to win this fantastic pieces of kit. We're gonna dive straight in with the maintenance tips. The nice thing is this time around, I don't need to use the prizes in the video to demonstrate. So I can take these pieces of kit and leave them for whoever's lucky enough to win the contest because I have this messy monster right here. Uh, this was my first ever backplate and harness. It is a very old, very thick, incredibly heavy dive right steel backplate with their classic harness. Um, I don't use this one too much anymore because it doesn't have the, uh, the slider on the back and I jump between different sets of doubles and it's just nice to have that kind of flexibility. Uh, but this served me for many, many years and sadly it's fallen into a state of neglect. So instead of focusing on the prize that we're actually giving away, which is a much more modern setup than this is, I figured I'd show you how to break down, maintain, and then rebuild a backplate and harness. Let's dive straight into it. Now, I know what some of you are thinking. Once you've got a harness that fits you really, really well, you wanna do everything in your power to make sure it stays in exactly the position that it is, because you probably came to that point through a tedious process of trial and error. And, oh, no, it's a bit too loose, tighten it up. No, no, that's too tight, I can't even get into it, and so on, until you find it fit just right. So some of you are probably watching this thinking, what is he doing, why is he taking the harness off? Believe me guys, it is absolutely the best way to get a long soak, get all the salt crystals out, especially if you're putting your gear away for a little while. The next time you come to bring it out again, yes, you'll have to set it up, and yes, there may be a little bit of trial and error. What I suggest you do is just take a chalk pen or a permanent marker and just mark exactly where the harness was threaded through the back plate, and then hopefully you can save your sizing that way. I've broken this back plate and harness down into its component parts. Let's look at each piece in turn and the maintenance considerations thereof, starting with the actual webbing that the harness is made out of. This is two inch nylon webbing. It's an ideal material for a harness because it's incredibly strong, but there are some maintenance considerations. Number one, with wear and tear, you will get fraying. As you can see on this one, it's been very well used, very well loved, and the edges are starting to go, which is gonna weaken the harness. Second of all, it's a very absorbent type of webbing, so it will soak up salt water, hold on to that water for a long time, it dries quite slowly, and it leaves behind a salt residue. So if you've been diving these in the ocean, you absolutely need to make sure that your harness gets a nice long soak in warm water to dissolve the salt crystals. And it's not about the damage that over time, yes, salt will degrade nylon because eventually it's gonna to lead to it becoming brittle and weakened. But it's more about, again, as we've said in other videos in the series, where you're tracking salt into the area that you store your dive gear to protect all your pieces of dive gear and not just 12 feet of $1.20 webbing. So let's work on the fraying then. All we've got to do is take a lighter and just anywhere that the webbing is getting a little bit fluffy, I'm just gonna run the light and just burn those edges off and reseal them. So then I'm just gonna go inch by inch through that harness, just running the lighter along the edge, just to burn off any fraying, any fluffy little tufts. And the same is true if you want to resize a piece of webbing. So maybe you just wanna take an inch or two off to trim the waistband. What I like to do is take a nice sharp pair of scissors and cut it just slightly on a diagonal, it makes it easier to thread. There we go, nice sharp cut through. Then I'm gonna take the lighter again, run it across the end there to stop it from fraying. Good to go, let's clean up that back plate. This old back plate then is in a bit of a state. As you can see, it's got patches of rust all over it. It's filthy dirty. So I say we give it a little bit of TLC. Now, you can buy all kinds of chemicals to eat rust. There's Mr. Crud Cutter's must for rust. 
and all that dirty stuff, none of those chemicals are particularly good for the marine environment. So I've always found that just a little bit of a metal scouring pad with some white distilled vinegar and a little bit of elbow grease and you'll get rid of the rust spots and have a nice shiny stainless steel backplate without flushing 10 tons of toxic chemicals away. I did put a towel down so that any excess vinegar isn't gonna spend the rest of its life stinking out the dive locker. Instantly looking better. Then all we need to do is just give it a nice fresh water soak, get the vinegar off and leave it to air dry. So there you have it ladies and gentlemen, that's about all the hints and tips I've got for you regarding taking care of your back plate and harness. I want to say thanks again to Dive Right for sponsoring this and every video in this series. And if you guys would like the chance to win this fantastic modern weight relief stainless steel XT light back plate from Dive Right together with their classic basic harness and crotch strap. The competition entry details are in the description of this video below and I wish every one of you the very best of luck. And if you're just thinking about switching to a backplate and wing from a jacket style BCD, I'm telling you right now, you will find it incredibly difficult to ever switch back. Until next time, ladies and gentlemen, don't forget to subscribe to our channel, Divers Ready, if you haven't done so already. And please do go over to Dive Right and show them some love on social media and let them know that it helps you guys out to sponsor these videos that we create to help you protect your investment in your dive gear. Until next time, my name's James. This was your gear maintenance video for this week. Dive safe, dive often.